we've got to do the front tyres. We didn't do them the other day. Uh, we pump them up. And then we're going home. As you can see, we've got the factory auto level. It's a bit of a job to reset that. Old man's checking tyres for me. because all the tyres are square anyway got our flashing light and we've got square tyres oh. still with the square tyres there goes the car temperature but that gauge is the stick that's probably just gonna go flick straight up to uh, 90 hopefully not 100 uh, 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 yeah can't remember whether we got 80 or not machine but anyway we're just taking a nice and steady we can't can't go fast just vibrate the machine to pieces. We've got plenty of oil pressure and all the good stuff. So it used to run hot, but I cleaned the radiator out internally once or twice. I used to use this for fixing up our track and our driveway and fence lines, all that good stuff, pulling people out when they got stuck. So I used to drive it everywhere. Moving car bodies around, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, 1940s AW6 McCormick. We're still in the charge zone, even with the flashing light. So that's good. It's nice to go a little bit quicker, but it's the front I'm worried about. You know, you don't want to bounce that around. There's another car. Flat out, this thing will do 1600 revs. Or is this one 1800? This one might actually get to 1800. I can't remember. No, I think 1600 for this old girl. So we just got our bounces wrong that we're turning the transmission a bit. So good, 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 good. Anyhow. What do you reckon, old man? Great auto level? Okay. Bit hard to reset the factory auto level, isn't it? Yeah. <coughs> well, that's here. Uh, I should grease the water pump, so I might just find a grease gun and do that quickly. Trip bucket. So, yeah. Which, because when we bought the thing, we had tyre blow out. This one blew out, so it's got a second handy on it. And it's actually in the dry, has more traction when you're pushing up piles of stuff than this one, which I'll put on later because the original one was a bit dodgy. But the tyre sizes are significantly smaller and the one it had, because what it had filled the guards on both sides, they were like 16, 9. Yeah, 16.9 or 18.3 28s. 
16, yeah, no, they were 16, 928s. Anyhow. Um, yeah, so this Kadena, uh, Kadena, this kit, loader kit was built in Butte, which is on your way to Kadena, back in the day. Um, my lights did used to work. Back one does, but not, not the, uh, not the front one anymore. I spent too much time out in the weather. So there you go. Have a read of that. So yeah, I should put some oil in it too while I think of it. And have a bit of a fish around. I've got a breather that's sort of, was cork with a nut in it to let air out and in. But obviously there's been a significant pressure change that sucked the cork in and the cork's probably shrunk. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, chain driven off of the front, uh, but you can still actually crank it, like hand start it. There's my crank handle. Um, I did used to use that, except for I'd leave the bucket up in the air and kind of you got to stand under it, but you generally just pulled from one side. This is in the way. I'm thinking about cutting that off for that reason. Still need a battery in it at the moment because. We've got it wired up for a coil, but this is actually the magneto. Um, I can't remember what I had to do to make it run off of the magneto. I believe just disconnect this. And that was power feed to the, yeah. Positive, negative disconnect it and plug the Maggie in and I think it'll run without a battery um, yeah join those two together I believe um, can't remember it would only be a bit of experimenting anyhow and then it would run without a battery you crank start it and you crank start it anyway without a battery uh, with a out the starter motor but you know I'm not going to, but yeah, to run off the alternator at the moment, I think once you disconnect this, that gets the feed from the points. I think that's got to go back into the magneto, into that one, but I can't be sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It, it does work. Uh, the crane, I've got another one of these, it's a crane. It's got a foul crane attachment on it. Is that water pump leaked? No. Um, that, yeah, runs off the Maggie side of it. Um, yeah, that's the blue wire. Yeah, just, you know, a live wire, just, you know, running across there, it's all good. It's okay, nothing's ever shorted out. <laughs> Anyhow, single action rams, uh, up, lower, throttle, that turny thing initially once upon a time would have been for the Venetian blinds, which I don't even know if it's still in the front of the radiator or not, generally once thermostats came out they were taken out, so that no one could leave them shut and cook the engine, obviously that's your on and off switch, pull it out for on and push it in to turn it off for the ignition. Start button. Uh, lights. Charge. Oil pressure and temperature. I it was stuck in two gears. I think someone bumped the bloody gear lever and knocked it all around. So last time I fired it up a few months ago to bring it over here, um, I had to take all this off and pull a gear lever out and get the selectors back in the right spot because it somehow got pulled out i don't know something got dropped pretty hard on the gear lever i think anyhow it doesn't matter fixed chokes down here and your updraft carburetors down there and yeah oil bar fair cleaner i do, do have an inline filter i've just been running off a little tank which is your petrol tank the big tanks for kerosene. I used to run kerosene on it all the time, but we don't do a lot of work with it now, so 
I'm just gonna run it off the petrol and probably wind in that screw there on the main jet a little bit to um, make it run a bit cheaper. But yeah, belly cover behind that. This is a, uh, actually a hot box. And if you can run the thing and just put your finger on this hot box, you're warm enough to switch over to kerosene when you first start it up. So yeah, I generally give it a bit of a bit of a feel up and you feel about there on that your hot box. And if you could hold your finger on it, but just you could get away with switching it over to Kero. Uh, you might just have to pull the choke on as you take off because it'll run lean and um, yeah, it's still got out. So you pull the choke on to correct that and you'd be right. Then the governor would keep up and open and shut and it would run as it's supposed to. And by then you'd moving, you'd get a bit more heat into the hot box to atomise the kerosene and all that good stuff. But yeah, there's a few bits and pieces here and that nah, looks good. Yeah, there's an alternator tucked in up on the other, other side of the thermostat housing. So yeah, chains are right. I might give that a bit of lube. That seal always has leaked around there a little bit. This pump is way bigger than it needs to be. This tractor will pick the back wheels up off the ground if you got something too heavy. That hammer I always use in my other videos came out of the counterweight of this. I was digging around in here one day, cleaning up, and there's this old steel ball pen hammer. And I've used it ever since. I figured I paid $700 for the hammer, or is it $700 for the tractor? Many, many years ago. And yeah, we used to pull posts out with it. And Oh, old man's probably been looking for that chain. That's the one I always used to use on this to move car bodies around. Because we used to, I used to scrap a lot of cars. I'd buy a Bluebird that was, you know, crashed, rusted out. Oh, that's my S hook and some other Datsun configuration. And yeah, get rid of what I don't need. Original muffler for something. Uh, yeah, that would have glowed back in the day when they were working hard. Anyhow, let's do this. <laughs> 